Hey, my wife was listening to me stumble over my words as I uh, worked on this edit. And um, so I handed her the mic, and I think she should probably voice over all my videos. She does a great job. Listen to this. Hey guys, this is the part two video. In part one, Greg removed the headers, H-pipe, transmission mount, and motor mounts. There's a link to it right up here on the right. Now he's getting ready to put the new stuff in. It's not a full tutorial, just following along as he knocks this stuff out. He'll tell you some of the bumps he ran into along the way. All right, let's get busy. All right, so I've got this new one in place here. I'm just kind of hanging in there. I had to lift the motor up maybe another half an inch. So I'm just going to get the uh, nut started on the back of this bolt and then uh, I'll get the bolts going into the engine, into the block. So I'll um, probably go ahead and tighten down the bolts that go into the block and just leave this one loose while I do the other side. Alright, so I've got the other one, other one done. Oh, I've got all the bolts taken out. The nut over here and the two... Uh, two bolts off the engine block so this thing's nice and loose now. So I just need to lift up the engine a little bit more. That'll be ready to come out. I think I explained this in the last video but not this video that I'm doing these motor mounts one at a time. So um, I've bolted this one in now I'm working on the driver's side uh, pulling the old one out and popping the new one in. So I'm just sw swapping the uh, engine hoist from side to side uh, so I can do it like that. Let's see if that'll do it. It's rattling around in there. You can see all loose. It's pretty, uh, pretty wobbly. So those are done. I just need to put in the last one be all set. I did find uh, that for the please for the nut here I ended up using a 21 millimeter no wait let me, uh, let me just double check Yeah, it's a 21 millimeter I used on this nut here. I had a different socket that would fit it, but it was pretty tight. It was a 13 16 so I'd probably go with the 21 millimeter instead. If it's anything like the other side, I'm probably going to have to lift the engine a little bit more to get this thing in there. Again, be careful of your uh, spark plugs. You don't want to damage one of those. Yeah, I'm going to have to get this thing up at least another half an inch. this some more and get it in there one way or another all right I've got this one bolted in 
Uh, went in pretty smoothly once I raised the engine up uh, another quarter inch or so. Um, be sure the little uh, nub on the back of the uh, motor mount plate drops into a little hole. Uh, one way you can get leverage on the motor mount um, to move it is just put a screwdriver in there just like that. And that little pin on the back is uh, right there. Alright, so next I'm going to uh, go ahead and pull the uh, engine brackets off of here um, just because they're going to have to come off to put the headers in anyways. So I'll uh, we'll go ahead and pull those off and then I'm going to jump underneath and start on the transmission mount. Alright, so I'm ready to mount the transmission cross member and the new mount here. So first thing I'm going to do by the way, the way they have this laid out, this is the front of the car on this end, this is the back of the car. Uh, so it's turned just like this. I'm going to put these two pieces together and then re-bolt this up to the bottom of the transmission using the factory bolts. I'll get a shot of it kind of halfway through the install so you can see what it looks like. All right, so I've got this mounted up here with the exhaust hanger. The bolts are almost all the way in, but they're not tight, so you can see this still moves around. Now you want to uh, just bring up, I get one end of the cross member bolted in, so you can just raise this up to where it meets the transmission mount and get your bolt started in there. All right, so I've got the two bolts started under here. So I'm going to uh, bring my jack over, I think just jack it up right into the middle here just so I can get this end of the uh, cross member to line up. So once that bolt is in I'll go ahead and tighten down each end of the cross member and then I'll go back to here. I'll tighten down uh, the top bolts first and then tighten down the bottom ones last. And I'll look up those torque specs and let you know what those are. If you missed it, I explained in part one that the exhaust hanger uh, was mounted upside down originally, so I installed it uh, just like it was mounted before. So the way you see it here is actually upside down, so you'll want to flip that over, which I ended up having to do when I uh, took the car to get the exhaust welded in. Had to take uh, all this back apart and flip that exhaust hanger over. So what you're seeing now is upside down. But I did find where uh, the bolts up here, um, where the mount uh, bolts right into the transmission. The spec on that is like 25 to 35 foot pounds, but you can't really get a wrench in there, a um, torque wrench. So I just used a regular wrench and made it good and tight so hopefully that'll be alright the ones under here I tightened about uh, 50 foot-pounds as well as the uh, the nuts on the other side of this bolt where the cross member bolts in but uh, that's it it's done I guess now I'm ready for exhaust Uh, yeah, another thing I realized that I, I didn't mention during the video uh, is the gaskets that I used. I used the metal OEM style gaskets that came with the headers uh, for this installation. But there are also some other Felpro gaskets that several people have recommended. And I'll put a link to those down in the summary. Alright, so I've got this side completely bolted up. I've got them torqued down. Tore these to around uh, maybe between 25 and 30 foot pounds. Um, some of these tubes are so uh, so fat you can't really get the uh, a socket on there. So the ones I could get to with a socket, I tightened down to about uh, 25 foot pounds. But then the other ones, I just used a wrench and got it as tight as I could get it with my uh, little 10 millimeter wrench. But that should be good. This side. Driver's side, you do have to take out the uh, the oil dipstick, and that's just a pressure fitting. So you just have to uh, work that back and forth, and then finally it'll it'll come out of there, just like that. 
and we can get that those headers in on that side. All right, let me knock that out, and then uh, we'll put this dipstick back in. Men's garage is like National Geographic. Go in here to grab one of these bolts. I see this thing crawling around. If you'd only gotten my reaction on camera when I first saw that, and I had my hand down there about two inches from it. Alright, so the Hornet has expired unexpectedly. Um, so one issue I've run into is the the heads of these bolts were too big to clear the, uh, the larger size uh, tube here. So I had to get some bolts with smaller heads on them. I'll show you the difference. So these are the ones that came with the uh, headers. And these are the ones that I bought. So you can see the difference in uh, the size of the head there. Uh, so these are a 10 millimeter, and I couldn't get a socket on them or even a wrench really. These are a uh, 5 16 So I can use a little quarter inch socket with an extension and uh, slip by the, uh, the tube of the header there. And then there's a washer that goes on there. So if you do need to get these, I've got a part number here. It's the ARP 100-1110. Alright, so uh, got all these torqued down. I used uh, one of the new bolts over here on this side. All the rest I used the bolts that came with it. This side little bit sharper bend I think to clear the uh, steering shaft down here and a little bit sharper bend and I just wasn't quite uh, able to get the socket on there so I used four of those new bolts on here the other issue I ran into is where I had to use one of these smaller bolts instead of the factory bolt uh, I don't have anything to attach my uh, dipstick to here so I've got to figure out something to do with that I'm thinking about doing a little small tack weld just on the edge of the header there this metal piece so uh, I'll look for some feedback on that I'm not gonna mess with it right now uh, but I did have to pull this dipstick out um, so I just kind of twist it and pull and it'll, it'll eventually just slide out of the block and then to put it back in I just used a long uh, flat blade screwdriver and stuck down through the, uh, the header here to get to the end of it there's a little ridge and uh, just tap that back in very gently until it went all the way into the block. Um, but that's it. I'm ready to uh, go underneath and start bolting up the, uh, the X pipe. All right, so I've got the uh, X pipe started. I would recommend having two people do this if um, if you've got the just a, a nut and a bolt that hold hold this in place so you can have somebody up top holding that bolt um, where you start the nut. The uh, factory headers have a built-in bolt so it's a little bit easier. Um, so I've got these just kind of loosely attached so they're just kind of just kind of hanging there and I've got the, the actual X pipe hanging in its hanger so um, it's not all the way in so I just need to move it uh, I guess more towards the front sorry about the it's, there's a lot of sun coming in the front of the garage so I was doing some weird stuff with the light um, but I'm just gonna push this uh, all the way towards the uh, front of the car and then once I get that in, I'll be able to connect these ones at the back. And then I'll work on meeting up. Uh, if I can get back out here enough. Work on meeting up this piece and the, uh, the X pipe. And they have some special brackets that came with them to put these two pieces together. So, uh. Alright, so I've got the exhaust all buttoned up here. Muffler's there, here's the new X-Pipe. Then uh, this BBK X-Pipe, it came with these 
uh, little brackets here that holds the uh, the part that goes up to the header to this um, flatter part back here where the X is. So I've got some exhaust leaks there. Just cranked it up a second ago. So I need to uh, I'm gonna try to tighten those up a little bit more. But if that doesn't resolve it, I may just take it and have these pieces welded. Uh, just to make sure they don't uh, open up again if I, if I can get them blocked. So, other than that, it sounded really good. Nice and loud. I've got it backed into the garage, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it's going to sound like on the road, but it sounded good in here. Um, so I've got these uh, braces that were bent before, and I got them pretty much straightened out. So I'm getting ready to uh, put these back on. And uh, I think I'll be about done with this. I do have the uh, control arms that I may do a different time. So uh, I'll put those braces on, get it on the ground, and then uh, see what it sounds like out in the driveway.